That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Torn Hearts, the third film directed by Bria Grant, uh, which is being released on Epics May 20th, 2022. Do you know Bria's other films? Yeah, we reviewed her previous film, 12 Hour Shift, starring Angela Bettis. Oh, in the hospital? It's like a 19, set in 1999 where she's like doing black market organ. That's right. I recall thinking that was an interesting film. There were things I liked a lot in that film, including Angela Bettis, but... Yeah, I yeah, I have to revisit it though. And what's the other film she's done? Uh, I don't know the name of her debut actually. I haven't seen it. All right. Um, I thought this was a fun movie. Yeah, I, I think particularly our, because of Katie Seagal. I think that was our uh, interest in watching this. Yeah, sure. yeah. But uh, it, it's interesting. I think a lot of I appreciate that a lot of effort was put into it. There's what appears to be original music. Um, I think the story feels original. For the most part. So, so I did appreciate that. But anyway, the basic story is, I think they're in Nashville? Mm-hmm. Okay. There are these two singers. What are their names? Um, Jordan and Lee. Jordan and Lee. They're like a duo. They're young ladies. And we find them performing like at the club they usually perform in. And we find out that their manager has brought this like famous guy, like famous country singer to watch them to decide if maybe he wants them to open for him on his next big tour. And that guy's played by... Shiloh Fernandez and uh, Joshua Leonard from the Blair Witch Project. Plays their manager. Yes. The guy, the, the famous country singer, what do I know him from? Um, God, I don't know what you know him from. I know him from White Bird and a Blizzard. Oh. Um, he's been in a bunch of stuff, though. I liked him. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are their names? Lee and what? Jordan. Which one is like the homely one? Um, Abby Quinn plays Jordan. Which they is, say she's the, like... Well, they don't say that. But they keep saying the other one's pretty, so the, what does that make her? The face. <laughs> of the, one's the face and one's the talent. Yes. Well, let me put it this way. Which one is the songwriter? Jordan. Jordan. And like then... Abby Quinn. The singer is Lee, mm-hmm. the prettier one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jordan. What's the country singer man's name? Jarek or J- J- Jacob? His character's name? Yeah. Caleb Crawford. Caleb. Caleb takes a liking to Jordan. Mm-hmm. And they hook up that night. And after sex, they're like just chilling. And he's like, I got to tell you, girl, we're not going to hire you because my record label wants a guy to open for me. They want this to be an all boys tour. So sorry. So she's upset, but she's roaming around his house and she sees him with a picture of this famous country singer named... Harper Dutch, yeah, played by Katie Seagal. Mm-hmm. Okay, Harper Dutch was part of a duo, just like Jordan and Lee, the Duchess sisters, like like uh, the Judds kind of, except they're sisters. Or the the Wilson sisters of Heart. We find out that the other sister is dead, and now Harper is like a recluse. But Jordan has the bright idea, like, oh, if we do a song with her ass. We would pop off. Mm-hmm. We don't need to open for you. So she convinces, whatever his name is, to give her Harper's address. Mm-hmm. So she and Lee go down there with like a, a strawberry rhubarb pie, thinking that she's going to be like, yeah, let's do a song. That looks dry. Well, lo and behold, they ring her little gate and she lets them in. And, you know, to wrap it up, she agrees to do the song. But the bulk of the film is them in her house and she's acting real weird. And we find out... That Harper killed her sister. Mm-hmm. And she's crazy. And has parts of her... Uh, has parts of her house. body in, in jars in the house. Mm-hmm. And that when she meets these two girls, randomly, who come to her door, she decides that this is an opportunity for her to be redeemed for killing her sister. And she's going to do that by killing Jordan. Because Jordan and Lee remind her of her and her sister. And... I guess Katie Seagal's character is supposed to be the more homely one who did all the writing and then her sister was the pretty one who was like the singer. Who was going to leave her. Who was going to leave just like Lee's going to leave Jordan. So Harper thinks that she can redeem herself by killing Jordan to set Lee free. Which would be the opposite of what Harper did to her sister. But ultimately they get into a little shootout and all three die. Mm -hmm. So the end of the film is... Who's the guy? Caleb Crawford, played by Shiloh Fernandez. He, the the three ladies ended up recording a song that we hear. 
which I actually thought was a really good song. It was kind of haunting, um, which I'm, I kept singing after the movie was done. I'm going to well, die with your name on my lips. One of the lines was, I'm going to die with your name on my lips. And I kept singing it. It was haunting. Uh-huh. Anyway, the end of the film is him. He has recorded this song as like a tribute, but it's now a big hit. So the irony being how women tear each other down and men reap all the benefits of their creative labor. Sure. <laughs> it's kind of the message of this. This also technically feels like the horror hag version of Country Strong. Yeah. Yeah. And being inside Harper's house was very like, whatever happened to Baby Jane it's very, to me. It's very Baby Jane, or it's like if Ann Wilson killed her sister, uh, if Nancy killed Ann, or the other way around, or if maybe Winona killed... There's a lot Ann. about this movie I liked. I thought everyone's acting was strong. Mm-hmm. Katie Seagal was so much fun to watch. Yes. That lady looks fantastic. I don't yeah. know how old she is, but she's not young. I think she's 68. She looks great. She looks great. And the way she like stomps, well, she doesn't really stomp. She like saunters around her house and she just looks fabulous. It's been, I don't even remember the last time I saw her as like a lead in a film. Because, you know, married with children, Futurama and um, Sons of Anarchy. She's kind of, She's had a very strong career. In television. And, I, you know, it just this is a film that, regrettably, she hasn't had a greater film career as well. Because she's... She's a, so much she's fun. She's a presence, yeah. She's so much fun. Um, but I thought everyone's acting was strong. Uh, the... Uh, Jordan? Mm-hmm. I really liked her. Because her character is, like, smarter and, and more original than her counterpart. Mm-hmm. And she has a line... Because Lee's trying to convince her, like they should, like how they can go mainstream, and Jordan has a lot of lines that I think work for me. But she says something like, "Oh, you want to sing about white wine and feelings?" <laughs> I, for some reason, I thought that was funny. Um, Katie Segal's character has this like tick where she taps everything, mm-hmm. and I fixated on that, and it was kind of hypnotic. Mm-hmm. It kind of reminded me of Get Out with the tapping with a, the... With a teaspoon. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you remember the show Making the Band with Diddy? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, Danity Kane. Danity Kane came yeah. from that and another group that the name just escaped me. Mm-hmm. But anyway, in the first season, no, second season, one of the one of the tasks they had to do was like they had to walk from like wherever they were in Manhattan to Brooklyn to get some cheesecake. And then that was him saying like sometimes you got to do. But then in this movie, Katie Seagal's character is doing that to the girls. Like, tasking them with things. And it reminded me of Diddy and making the bed. Which I thought was funny. Um, I don't really have much else. I think the story feels original. But then it falls off because... Like, I wish Katie Seagal's character wasn't just flat out crazy. Yeah, it's, it be, it's a little one note. And the reveal, her motivation for how she's handling these women is... Feels- right just kind of stupid uh it, it just, i wish she would have had some history with these girls like maybe she knew who they were before they showed up or they could have retained the same message of this film but have something else could have happened it just feels like th- this was a th- there needed to be two or maybe three more drafts of this script hammered out uh and it, it just made me think of all the ways you know it's like you want to fix things and it's like oh what I thought Katie kind of Seagal kind of looks. She's very reminiscent of Judith Light to me as well, and mm. I kept thinking because I kept saying like, wouldn't it be great to have this, like, Katie Seagal and Judith Light in a film where they're either sisters or fussy lesbian lovers that everybody hates, but they're this power couple. Uh, that's what I was doing while watching this film. But you know, Katie Seagal has had a singing career uh, mm. for the past thirty years or so as well. Because I was a young kid and I remember buying her album from 1994 that was called Well, uh, because whatever we were watching at, at that age, like VH1, I would see the music video for this film she, or this song she did called September Rain. Mm-hmm. I remember that. <laughs> but I remember really liking that. And I was a kid. Like I was like not even in middle school yet. And then I remember seeing an interview saying like, oh, this is about all my miscarriages. Yeah, which, I remember which, which that. Which kind of changed the meaning of the song. I remember that. But of course that attracted me as a kid, but whatever. Um, I, oh, do you have anything else? No, that's about it. I would recommend it. I had fun. Um, yeah. it's, it's coming out on the same day where her character's name is Harper and so is Jesse Buckley's character's name in Men that are both released the same day. Oh. What would you give this movie? Uh, three. I would give it three out of five. Yeah, it's fun. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Bye.